I'm starting backwards here. I'm going to show you in as short of amount of time as possible how to make this in Python, uh, and it's not too bad. So let's run it. I want to show it to you. So here's a spacecraft that's giant, so you can see it. And there's the Earth, and it is in 3D. And we're going to use some physics, and we're going to use gravity, and we're going to use momentum. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to show you. We're going to remake this, and we're going to do everything. I'm going to start on paper. So let's jump over to the paper. Okay. So imagine that we have the Earth right here at some vector location, RE. It doesn't have to be at the origin. It can be anywhere. And then I have a spacecraft right there. Uh, and it has a vector position rs there is a gravitational force on the spacecraft and i'll just call that f because there's only that's the only force acting on it is the gravitational force uh, and it's acting along a line towards the center of the planet and you'll notice i have everything shifted it's not a it's not i'm not doing easy gravity um, all in a line i'm doing real gravity three-dimensional gravity so we can calculate the, this gravitational vector force as negative g, where g is a constant. g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Mass of the spacecraft times the mass of the Earth divided by the magnitude of this vector r. So we need to find this vector r. It goes from here to there, and that's the vector r squared. And then I have to multiply it by r hat. So first, this r. This r, if I start at the Earth and end at the spacecraft, it's just like a displacement. So r is equal to the final position, rs, minus the initial position, re, the, rate of the position of, that's the position of the Earth. Now, that goes in here. I need to take the magnitude of that. I need to square it. We can do all that vector calculation in Python. And we're going to do this in Python r hat is a unit vector pointing in the same direction but it has a magnitude one see the problem is that g m m and the magnitude of r are all scalar values and i need a vector value for the force so i need this r hat to turn this back into a vector so this negative sign says that the vector force on this spacecraft is in the opposite direction of that vector from the center to that Okay, now we are doing the simplest possible. So the Earth's not going to move. The mass of the spacecraft is very, very small compared to that, and that's fine. So we calculate R. Now I can calculate the force, and I'm going to rewrite it. Why am I rewriting this? I just wrote that. M S M E over the magnitude of R squared R hat. Now I can break this problem into a short time interval. Delta T is small. How small? Small enough that I can assume the force is constant over that time interval. If the force is constant, I can write F as the change in momentum with respect to time. And remember, momentum is mass times velocity. So if that's true over that small delta t, I can write this as P2 minus P1 over delta t. That's my change in momentum. So if I solve this, if I multiply by delta t, if I add p1 to both sides, I get p2 equals p1 plus f delta t. So this says that if I calculate the force and I know the momentum to begin with, I can find the momentum at the end of that small time interval. Now I can use this momentum and assume it's constant. And if the momentum is constant, then I can say P2 over M is the average velocity, and that's delta RS over delta T, right? The position of the spacecraft, not the position with respect to the Earth. And I can do the same thing. I can say this is going to be RS2 minus RS1 over delta T. And I can solve that for RS2. I get RS2 equals RS1 plus P2 over M delta T. So we just did some serious magic here. Number one, calculate the vector. Number two, calculate the force. Number three, use that force and update the momentum at the end of the time interval for just a small time interval. And then number four, that's a four, 
use that momentum we just calculated and update the position. We only know where it is after a small time interval. So that means I can do it again, actually update time, T2, T1, plus delta T5. Come back up here and do it all again. This is called a numerical calculation, if you haven't seen them before. Why am I writing it out? I am. And this method is actually called the Euler method. There's, an, there's other methods uh, to calculate stuff like this, but we can deal with the changing vector force, and that's what's so great about Python. I can deal with these as vectors, and I can model these, thing, these things in three dimensions. Let's get to it. Okay, jump back over to Python. And in this case, I am going to use uh, my blank Python. See, look at that. It's not blank. I lied. But I kind of lied, but it's not a big deal. I put in there three things. Three things. Uh, the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth, because I forget those. So let's just start off with making the Earth. So I'm going to say Earth. It's a sphere. Let's just run that. So sphere is a built-in object in WebVPython that makes this 3D object. I, it's a function I call, and it makes this 3D object. I can rotate it around. I can zoom in and out. It's awesome. But I can also give it parameters about the, prop, the, the position, the radius, and stuff like that. So let's give it a position. I don't want to put it at the origin. I'm going to put it at uh, position equals vector uh, negative RE00. Zero, zero. So it's going to be negative on the negative x-axis. Just for fun. I'm just moving around for fun. And let's give it a radius of RE. So position POS and radius are predetermined properties of that sphere object. Okay, so you can't just make up anything. You can make up some things. But this will make it in that position with that radius. And if I run it, so it looks not that much different. It's shifted over. Uh, it's ginormous, right? Six million meters in radius. But... The program zoomed out so you can see the whole thing. Let's do one more thing. This is fun. Texture equals textures dot earth. Now it looks like the earth. You see, you can rotate that around. Um, now it's shiny. The, the lighting's wrong. But it looks like the earth, and that's just for fun. Okay. So we have the earth. Now we need to make the spacecraft. I'm going to call it craft. And it's, let's just make it also a sphere. Where should we put it? Well, let's put it kind of over on the positive x-axis. So I'm going to say position is equal to vector um, 1.4 times RE. I need to use RE because it's, they're large distances. Uh, and let's say 0 0.4 times RE 0. And then let's give it a radius of something. Let's say it's a space station and it has maybe a 100 meter radius. And there you go. Can you see the space station, the, the spacecraft? It's there. It's right somewhere around here. No, you can't see it. You can't see it because it's too tiny. So we're going to have to make this bigger. Let's make this RE over 20. Let's see what that looks like. So there, that, it's way too big. That's way too big. But we can see it. And that's fine. We can, we can change these things so we can see it. And actually, let's do some other things. I'm going to press return. Uh, color equals color dot yellow. I mean, if I was going to have a spacecraft, it'd be yellow. And make trail equals true capital T-R-E. So make trail, when it moves, it's going to leave a trail behind it. And really, the only thing you'll see, it's not moving yet, but you see it is yellow. Okay, we need um, one more, pro we need two more properties. The mass, I'll just call it M. M equals... Um, 5,000. It's like a car or something. I don't know. My space car. Yellow space car. Uh, I need the initial momentum. So I'm going to write it like this. <clears throat> Craft dot P. <clears throat> dot P. So if I put dot P, it puts the property P of the object craft. You don't have to do that. But it's a good idea to get in the habit of doing that. You could even do that with a mass. But I just, I just want it to be as simple as possible. So the momentum, let's start off with a momentum of M times vector 0, 0, 0. It needs to be a vector. I can't model 3D motions if it's not a vector. 
Next, I need the time. So time is zero and the time step. DT is 0 0.01. That's, that's something that we often use in motion. Small, a lot of times is 0 0.01. That's fine. Now let's run this for um, 100 seconds. That seems reasonable. So I'm going to say while. T you can do other uh, conditions for your loop. Time I find the best because I know that time is going to get to that point. It's, it's easy to make a, a loop that could be not really making much sense or never ending. So while t is less than 100, rate 100, this will make it run in real time. No, it won't. Yes, it will. So t, I don't want to do that. Let's make it run 1,000. Rate one. So rate says do 1,000 calculations a second, 1,000 loops per second. And so if I have a DT of 0.01, you can see what will happen. Okay, it should take 10 seconds, which is still too long. Let's make this, is that 10 seconds? I don't know. Okay, well, T is less than 50 seconds. Okay, so we're going back to my list, right? See, we're going to do this. We're just going to put this on the computer. So the first step is to calculate R. R equals. Remember, it's the vector location of the spacecraft minus the vector location of the Earth. So the spacecraft, the position of the spacecraft, I already have. It's this thing up here. But I don't, I don't want to write that out because it could change. So I can actually just say craft.pos. Craft.pos is the R vector for the craft. And earth.pos is the vector for Earth. Now, you could put the Earth at the center, at the center of the origin, the origin and then just have R as craft.pos. I don't think that's a good idea because later on it's not going to be true, so you want to do it this way. Now I'm going to calculate the gravitational force. I'm going to write that equation, and I can do it in one line. Negative g times mass of the Earth times mass times r hat. So r hat is a unit vectors are built into Python. Norm r. That's it. Divide by the magnitude, also built in, mag r, I got to square that. So now I have the vector value of the force. And it was getting a little too low. Okay. What's next on my list? The next thing on my list is to update the momentum. So let's update the momentum. Craft.p equals craft.p plus f times dt. The next on my list is to update the position of the craft. Craft.pos. Remember, that's my r craft. That's the location of the craft, craft.pos. It's craft.pos plus craft, I, I, I blanked out for a second there, craft.p times dt divided by m. So craft.p divided by m is the velocity. Now I need to update time. t equals t plus dt. Let's run this. Oh, and I'm going to do this. Uh, let's print. I want to show you that it does move. So I'm going to say print rc equals uh, craft.pos in meters, and then let's do it at the end of the loop too. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking ahead here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So it's running, it's running, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's still moving. I didn't update time, did I? I did. Okay, oof. Okay, now I gotta wait for this thing to end. Mistake on my part. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. There it goes. Okay. So it did move. Look at that. It did move. This position is different than before. This position, that y position is different. So it did move. It didn't move very much because it wasn't a very long time. And in fact, the idea of a small time step is relative. We want to think about how far could it move and we could still have a constant force. So it's possible actually to increase this dt to something huge like let's do 5. Uh, and now I'm going to do it for 500 seconds. So each time step, each time I increase time, it's going to be by 5 seconds. So if I run it this time, you see it did move. Let's do it a little bit longer. Let's do it for 5,000 seconds. Okay, that was kind of cool. And you'll notice something very important. 
one, it we don't really need to print this out. It did change. It like exploded, right? Let's let's back that off a little bit. Um, let's do maybe two thousand seconds. Okay, that's good. So it did move. It's moving towards the Earth. Let's increase it to three thousand seconds. There, that's good. So you'll notice what happened right there. It just crashed into the ocean and it went right through the earth and it will do that because we are in control of this code. This is not a video game. This is us calculating stuff. We never said if you hit the surface of the earth, stop. So it just said, update the momentum, update the position. Got it. Going to do that. There's no, there is no earth there. There is no spoon. Okay. I just made that about like that. There is no spoon. That was, of course, from the Matrix. Um, okay. So it, it seems to be fine. If I increase this too much, what it does blow up. And the reason is that you have a 10-second time step. During that 10 second, seconds, it's going to pass through the center of the Earth, at which point R goes to zero. If R goes to zero... The force goes to infinity, and if you have an infinite force over a very short time interval, the increase in momentum is just whacked out out of control. So it, it broke the calculation, uh, which is fine. We can fix that. Let's just not make it go to the center. So let's give the object an initial velocity in the y direction. Let's say it goes 100, 100 meters per second this way, and I'm going to run it. And it, you'll notice it bent a little bit, not much. So let's do this, 500. Okay, so you'll notice again, it's blowing up, it's getting too close to the center, but it is curving. Let's increase this even more, 1500 meters per second. Okay, that's pretty good. So you'll, you'll see here, it actually started orbiting the center of the Earth. It doesn't know the Earth has any, any size. Uh, and so it passed through the surface and came back out. That's kind of cool. Let's increase this to 2,500. Okay, faster. It's still still going in. Let's do 3,500. And let's run this for a longer time. 10,000. Okay. Oh, it still crashed. It crashed. didn't really crash. Um, let's say 45. And you'll notice I'm just playing with the numbers. I'm not calculating what the speed should be. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just showing you that you can indeed model the motion of this. Let's make it go for a little bit longer. Let's go twice as long because we're having such a good time. And there it goes. It's in 3D, right? And see, now it's making a non-circular orbit, and that's exactly what it should do. Um, so there you go. That's your first 3D model, we can make a lot of cool stuff. Um, we can say, well, how long does it take to get around? We can make graphs, we can plot stuff, but I want to give you a quick intro to making this kind of stuff because it's really awesome and we can do really complicated and awesome things. And it's not that bad, look at the code. Okay, look. let's look at this code. This stuff, constants. This stuff right here, that's just making two objects. This is the, this is the important part, this stuff right here. That's five lines. That's it. Calculate the force. We had to calculate the position, the R vector first. Calculate R, calculate force, update momentum, update position and time. Do it again until you want to stop. I will put a link to this code down below and you should play with it. That's it.